Hey there guys, welcome to our next chapter. And this one's gonna be way smaller and faster unlike most of the stuff that we've done before. And this is actually gonna be just a quick sort of uh, little video on how to do a real-time animated clock that would actually work sort of properly. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, let's just get right on to it. Uh, the first thing we need to do is find ourselves a texture. And I have this one over here. <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, let's just put it in here and this is our texture and yeah, in the alpha channel we have this, which is, yeah, you guessed it, this is like a clock hand. And what we need to do first, since we're going to be doing some rotating, let's get a rotator knot node. And what it does is it actually rotates your stuff. And here you specify the center and the speed. So let's just make it one, just so it would be, uh, you know, I don't know, whole number. And from here, let's just plug it in and see how it goes. Uh, click here to toggle uh, a real-time material viewport. That's how you properly pronounce it. So yeah, anyway, you see that it's going the other way, which is not what we want. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to reverse the animation. And to do that, we're just going to make speed a negative value. There, there you go. This clock handle is clock hand is sort of rotating uh, clockwise right now and the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna uh scale it up and down because we need three clock hands for uh minutes seconds and hours so we're just gonna scale them and in order to do that we got our uv texture coordinate node and let's just plug it in here right now and you'll see as soon as i start changing stuff uh the animation is gonna get wonkier Now what, let's make it 0 0.6, for example, something that doesn't have a 5 in there, just so it would be easier. But you see how this thing moved, and this is because uh, 0 and 0 in UV space starts in this sort of left corner. And once we scale it up, uh, yeah, this is where 0 0.5 ended up being, you know. this Now this is our 0 0.5. Uh, um, so anyway, now if we want, to, want it to be back... In the center, we probably want to move it uh, to 0 0.3 and 0 0.3 again. And now you see, uh, it looks like it's going around the center, but it's not. Uh, but it's not the handle that is in the center. You know, the axis is not there. It's just the the offset, sort of the whole texture sheet. If you can imagine the alpha of the of the texture being a separate sheet, and we're gonna alleviate that. Okay, so in order to do that, we'll need a pen in node. So let's grab a panner. But apart from that, since I've got uh, some of my notes here, and by notes I meant notes like notes and not nodes with a D. So yeah, I just want to make the numbers correct, just so we have it easier, you know, because uh, some of this takes a bit of experimentation. So uh, you know, I just want to make it quick for you guys. Uh, so basically, um, right now you see we have a panner here and we'll, we're just going to be moving this thing uh, like back to the center. Uh, but first, you know what we're going to do? We're going to grab a constant node because uh, with this panner, we don't want it to be animated real. You know, we want it to just sort of move our texture where we want it to be and be done with it. You know, so that's why we assign it one as sort of a unit of time that has passed. And that should be it. So now when we, uh, you know, input 0 0.1, it should be almost at the center. And uh, sort of one thing to keep in mind that this num number is just derived from experimentation. So yeah, I mean, you can always play around with it. No big deal. But one thing that I did wanted to show you guys, I guess, let's try it. What, what would happen if we would non-uniformly scale the texture? And this is something just for you to see. Uh, I mean, never mind the offset at this point, but uh, I just hope that you guys can see. Let's try this. Nah, it's going to be too far out. Uh, but I hope you see that the, the arrow, that the clock hand, actually also sort of scales up and down uh, this X, the, the Y and Z value right here. So it sort of stretches and then it contracts back. And 
Uh, technically, you just can't scale uh, something non-uniformly and then rotate it because this is actually pixels that uh, are, are sort of, uh, you know, communicating your tiling. So when you offset them and rotate them, you get different tiling at different rotations. So that doesn't make much sense. So this is why we have to keep those guys uniform, which isn't super nice, but I guess we can live with it. Uh, and yeah, I'm just going to put this one into the comment just so it would be more obvious which one are we dealing with. And one other thing that we probably want to do is we probably want to have control over how fast, uh, you know, the clock is going. So we're going to grab a time node, multiply, and just for the sake of experimentation, because right now it's just like an arbitrary amount of time, you know, the speed. But when we're going to be testing seconds or minutes or anything like that, we'll want it to be really fast. So yeah, you see, we can like speed it up. So now it's double. And yeah, so now let's do the other, the other hand. And uh, this one's going to be, I think, seconds, minutes and hours. This is how we're, how we're going to arrange that. But before we do that, let me just plug the time here too and the time multiplier here as well and now let's change up the tiling let's make it 0 0.9 and 0 0.9 again and then just go down here all the way and change it to 0 0.9 as well and here just to get it back to the center we input 0 0.5 and we don't see it yet, but that's no big deal because now we're just going to multiply the two. And since they're both black on white background, multiplying is just going to sort of reveal the other arrow. And it's not revealed right now, which is weird. Okay, let's try it like that. And now like that, you see that the scale definitely changes. Oh yeah, and the problem is that they have the same speed, so it doesn't make much sense. So, uh, well, because they're sort of rotating in, you know, unison, or whatever you want to call it. But if we change the speed, you see, there you go. See, one arrow sort of stands there because I assign a very, very small speed. But that's okay, because we're going to be multiplying them later on, like the, the overall time multiplier that we got here. Uh, so yeah, let's just make it, for example, 50 for now. Although this one's going to go just frantic. Uh, uh, trust me on that one. Okay, so I think the smallest one on top over here is going to be our uh, our time. So that means that this little arrow, the, the this little handle that is now just going bonkers here, uh, should move 12, time, 12 times faster because... Uh, when you look at our clock here, you see that this uh, arrow, like the, the minute handle, hand should do a full circle while the hour one just does one twelfth. So that's why we just uh, we just input here something that is twelve times bigger than what we had over there. So now it would actually be accurate, which is exactly what we're shooting for. Because we're we're trying to make something that would actually you know make sense, be realistic in terms of uh, how the arrows relate to each other, which is just a fun little exercise and, you know, a tiny bit of math. Uh, but yeah, let's just do another one. The last one that we have left, which is the, the minute hand. And this one, let's make it bigger because they're usually bigger, I think. Although they're thinner, but we can't scale it non-uniformly. So yeah, what you're going to do? Anyway, you'll see that it will end up looking perfectly fine, so don't worry about that, guys. Uh, but now, at this point, we have our panner, and uh, if we want to bring it back to the center, it's going to be minus 0 0.2. And you know what's cool is that those things don't necessarily, like the center that we're moving it to, they, it doesn't necessarily have to, you know, align... Uh, like 100% because if it's slightly off, then it just will look like, you know, the arrow is sort of slightly off center and uh, it'll be kind of jiggly and everything. So it's not that bad. I mean, like some slight sort of arrow uh, error in there is nothing, you know, too dramatic. So yeah, now we have to change the speed. So with this one, uh, 
it has to be 60 times bigger. Uh, because, yeah, while, uh, you know, your every second arrow goes full circle, uh, your emitted arrow just have to move 160th. So, yeah, let's just make it 0.72. And let's put it in the comments for you guys if you're going to be playing around with this shader later on, you know, so you'll know what's what. But uh, yeah, as you see me plug it in right here and and now I just put it into emissive and something's off, but this is cool. Okay, let me check. 1.4 minus, oh yeah, you see, because it's actually panning too in real time. This is my bad. I forgot to freeze the time for the panner. So now, oh no, it's actually quite small. Oh yeah, and you see this is actually something very important. You see something appearing there to the side. We don't want that to happen. And in order for that not to, what we do is we go into the preferences of the texture. And then instead of uh, address X and Y set to wrap, we just clamp it. Which means that we don't sample anything outside sort of of the, of the space here. But what we do is we just leave the color that is on the border. So that's what's clamping it is. And yeah, right now let's see how, how it works. And yeah, the other thing that uh, I forgot here is let's plug our time controller here. So we have our, yeah, second zero, little small guy over here, just going longers. Okay. <laughs> uh, now anyway, uh, you see that we scaled it up. So it actually made it smaller and not bigger, which is my fault, the, yeah. Anyway, uh, I hope that it still makes sense. And now you see that we've got our uh, clockwork and now we probably want to make it a parameter and just uh, call it something like time speed. And that's it. Now all we have to do is just grab a uh, clock texture and multiply it once again, because you've seen that our uh, sort of original diffuse is endless, you know, it's just uh, the numbers. Now if we plug it into the diffuse, so there you go. And you see that uh, the center is not exactly right, like spot on. So you get this little jittering, which I find to be pretty, you know, nice and lively. But yeah, let's check it out. Let's see how that works. Uh, you see the, the minute arrow is going uh, full circle. And the second it hits 12, it's going to go exactly over two. So yeah, I see that uh, the clock, uh, the minute and hour one works. And now let's just slow it down 50 times back to one and try to see uh, if the seconds work. And well, it looks like, you know, it's over in 12 and bam, one minute passed. And now let's see how it goes through here. So it's been half a minute and now it's going back to 12 and bam. So it's... Is there, you see that this clock is actually working, you know, it's like, <laughs> at least you got your time right. And it's mostly like a mass exercise, but it's nice, I think, uh, that you can sort of figure it out and make all the rotators work and just get a general idea of how they do work. Um, so yeah, thank you very much, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you further down the road. Cheers.